Now, forget the Italian nanas. Our very own Katrin Layden is showing us how to achieve perfection with her take on fresh homemade pizza. Good morning to you, Katrin. Good morning, Adam. I should now, say, good, good morning, the vaccinated Katrin Layden. Hey! <laughs> I, I want to tell you, I'm a new woman since I got that vaccine. Oh. I'm far more relaxed. The stress is gone. At least we can see light now at the end of the tunnel. Well, you had us nearly in tears again watching it a few minutes ago, and I'm sure so many people across the country are saying they're so delighted for you. I mean, when I met you last week when you were going in, you were literally shaking. Absolutely. I, I, see, they caught me on the hop too. They phoned me and just gave me two hours' notice, as you heard. So um, I was in a state of shock. I wasn't expecting it so quickly. So anyway, I'm thrilled. I'm a new woman. There you go, the new woman, and you're making pizza, which we very rarely make. So the new woman's on a new, on a new mission. New mission. <laughs> so here I have 235 grams, Adam, that's 10 ounces, of our Adam strong flour. Now, the strong flour means it's more gluten in it, and gluten is important for yeast making. You could get away with making it, with that right there, it's safer. Um, you could get away with making it with cream cane flour, but it's best to use the, um, the strong flour. Now, to that, we add one sachet of the fast-acting yeast, which is seven grams. You buy the packets, you get about six, I think, packets in the, um, in the little box. Now, to that, I'm also going to add just a teaspoonful of salt, and this is important. But it's also important that you don't add too much salt, because the salt, or indeed if you put sugar in, too much sugar or salt can kill the yeast in your pizza base or in your mixture. Now, I'm going to put that onto a low heat, Adam, just to mix our new heat society. Low speed on the mixer. <laughs> you get the heat to prepare a lot quicker if you have the electric mixer with the dough hook. And the stronger the mixer, well, the quicker you'll get the job done. Now, into that, we're going to add two tablespoonfuls of oil. I'm using the extra virgin olive oil. You can use any oil of your choice. Into that, we're going to add four tablespoonfuls of milk and six tablespoons of water. One, two, three, four. Then two tablespoons of water, which we have here. Sorry, six tablespoons of water. Two of oil, four of milk, and six of water. There we have it. Now you just let those ingredients combine together with the dough until it all comes together and you have just a lump of dough out. Yeah. Now, I'm going to turn it off at this stage because you bring the mixture together to form a dough. You then knead the mixture for about 10 minutes. I'll show you how to knead in just a few moments. But if you have the dough hook, you put it on, to, on the dough hook on full speed for about five minutes and your mixture is ready. You then put it into a, a lightly oiled bowl, cover it and let it double in size. So hopefully, where is it? Here we are. This one has doubled in size. Just cover it with clean film or a plastic bag, and that's what the mixture looks like. Can you see that, Adam? Yes. Lovely, light, lovely, light, springy mixture. Now, you take that out of the bowl onto a dusted, floured surface, and you knead it again for about two or three minutes. So you see a nice doughy mixture. There's now, quite a you... lot in this, Catherine, isn't there? There is. This will make about three small or two large pizzas, Alan. Now, you just stretch the dough with a little bit of flour, and that's to distribute the yeast. You use your the bottom of the palm of your hand here to distribute the yeast in a yeast mixture with strong flour and yeast. So just press it out, knead it for about two minutes, and then I have one here that we made earlier, and this is one that I actually cut it, the full mixture is three. And I'm just going to roll this out now and into a round or a knob long, whichever way you want it. And we're going to just... Now, you can make it as thin or as thick as you wish, Adam. Yeah, I, I, like, don't the, like, I like the thin crusts on it, I must admit. Why? Mm. Thinner the better, I would say. Yeah. Now, you get fuller if you use the thick bread, but I prefer it just... We nice have one day. here in the in the studio, which I think is ready. So I'm going to take this one out of here. Oh, look it's at this! Oh, perfect! Wow! How is it? Oh, lovely! Perfect. Wow, that looks gorgeous. I, I just took mine out a few minutes ago. Now we're going to put it into the tin, either round or oblong, 
Now, here I have my tomato base. And I've made this one myself with some tin top tomatoes, some herbs, and some um, tomato puree. So you just spread that on top. Now, if you haven't time to make your base, you can also buy an actual pizza base, which I'll show you now in just a second. So we just put that on like that. Here we have the pasta sauce will do. Italian tomato sauce will do for the base if you haven't time to make up your own. Now, onto that we're going to put whatever filling you like, Alan. Ham, pineapple, whatever. As you I said, I have peppers and vegetables in this, do you? It's a whole lot in it, Jeff. Yeah? Oh, wow. Finely chopped red onion, yellow, so red onion, yellow peppers, red peppers, and some chopped button mushrooms. So all in now on top. And now we're going to, we might as well use it all up while we're at it. The more fruit we get, the better. So it's not really fattening, Alan, to be honest with you. You can cut down a bit of the cheese if you wish. Yeah. Now, here's yeah, some chorizo. <clears throat> we just place the chorizo on top. And I put the cheese on first and the chorizo. I find the chorizo stays in position better if you use the, put that in first. Now, a light dusting of cheddar cheese. And I also add some mozzarella. So you can get the mozzarella ball and, you know, yeah, pull it apart. Over it. Spring and it over it. Tell me, Katrin, how long would this go in the oven for? About 10 to 15 minutes, 200 centigrade, 400 Fahrenheit, gas mark 6. Upper shelf position. Ooh. And because the base is thin, Alan, it'll cook in no time. So here we have the one that I just took out of the oven a few minutes ago, like you have up there. And I'm going to join you now in a slice. It's delicious. I love the chorizo on it as well. So do I, Alan. Yeah, yeah. gorgeous. Now, this, you can make your pizza base and you can freeze it. Or if you want to double it in size, Alan, you can put it in the fridge and do it overnight. You can slow rise it as well. So there we have our simple pizza. Lovely crusty base on it. Is yours crusty? Oh, breakfast sorted. Not the healthiest breakfast in the world, but breakfast sorted. Gorgeous. Patron, thank you so much. Again, My that, pleasure. That was lovely. And once again, thank you so much for letting, go, letting us go with you last week to see you getting vaccinated. And just to see the actual relief on your face was oh. joy for me. I, I went home with a big smile on my face. I really did. Delighted, Alan. It's great to have the support. Thank you so much. Oh, you're more you. than welcome. We love you here. Take care. We'll see you next week. Bye. You Bye. Yes, now and still to come, uh, did you get a pet over lockdown? Well, if so, Vicky the vet is here to, uh, would, to uh, rescue the guide, sorry. Vicky the vet is to the rescue with her guide to dealing. I'm, telling, I'm still thinking about Catherine. She's here, if, you're, if your pet has separation anxiety, she's here with her guide. I got it. And makeup artist to the stars, Charlotte Tilbury will be teaching us how to achieve the perfect brow. That's at 9.35, we'll see you in a few minutes. <laughs>